a matter of time, I suppose. The Watchmen film crew had asked the National Academy of Sciences if they knew of anyone who could do a little science consulting for them. The National Academy knew of me through the physics of superheroes, and so I got the call, uh, would I be interested in working on this film? Have you ever heard of it? It's called Watchmen. Well, I've been reading comic books for quite a while, and so yes, I had heard of Watchmen. I was very excited and very happy to say yes. And now, class of 2013, Please welcome the man Hollywood tapped to watch The Watchmen, James Cacalios. Thank you and welcome. I'm Jim Cacalios, a professor in the School of Physics and Astronomy. The University of Minnesota is a research university, and my research in physics spans from the nano to the neuro. I work with Professor Kortzhagen in mechanical engineering, making amorphous nanocrystalline semiconductors for solar cell applications. And I work with professors Reddish in neuroscience and Nedoff in biomedical engineering, studying, studying voltage fluctuations in the brain. But that's not why I was asked to talk today. <laughs> I was asked, I believe, because back in 2001, I created a freshman seminar that was titled Everything I know about physics, I learned from reading comic books. This is a real science class that covers everything from Isaac Newton to the transistor, but there's not an inclined plane or pulley in sight. All the examples come from superhero comic books, and as much as possible, those cases where the superheroes get their physics right. Now, I bring this up because if you're going to be successful here in college and later on in life, you have to learn some important lessons from this class. A freshman seminar has limited enrollment, and my class this fall is already full. Of course, you can always buy my book, The Physics of Superheroes, available at all major bookstores and Amazon.com. <laughs> but I will tell you now, for free, what you must need to, to learn, what you must become if you're going to be successful here at the U of M and later on in life. You must be simultaneously a geek and a nerd. <laughs> My kind of folk. <laughs> What's the difference? A geek is someone who is passionate about something, whether it's comic books or NASCAR, Civil War history or baseball, uh, Renaissance painting or hip hop, something that speaks to you and that you really love. For we geeks, our love is not a guilty pleasure because we don't believe in guilty pleasures. We like what we like. Snobbery is just the public face of insecurity. Here at the University of Minnesota, you are in the perfect place to develop your inner geek. We have over 3,300 faculty in 155 different departments and programs, and every professor is a geek for their field of study. Every faculty member does what they do because they love their subjects. Learn from us. See if our geekiness can spark your own. Cast a wide net and begin what will be a lifelong process of discovery about the world and yourself. Try different subjects outside of your major, outside of your field of comfort. As Mr. Spock says, there are always possibilities. Trust us, we have what you're looking for. But it's not enough to find a subject, a field, a problem that speaks to you. Someday, and believe me, four years from now, that day will come, you will graduate. And then you'll have your whole life ahead of you. So you'll want to become the most stimulating, interesting, engaging person you can be. And you'll also need to find a job. <laughs> then you'll discover that it's not enough to be a geek. You must also be a nerd. Now, one of the best definitions of nerd <laughs> was provided by Bart Simpson's best friend, Milhouse Van Houten, 
When some bullies called him a nerd, Milhouse protested, I'm not a nerd. Nerds are smart. All of you are smart. Your grades, your ACTs, your SATs, you are the best prepared, brightest class we've ever had. But you must focus that potes- potential, hone it, develop it, not become not just smart, but nerd smart. Let us show you the way. Your professors are not just geeks, they are also nerds. Seriously, look at them. <laughs> They are experts in physics and history, French literature, biochemistry, geography. Take advantage of us. You're paying tuition, get your money's worth. All of us in all departments are active in research. We could all use a hand. Get all you can out of your classes, not just a letter grade. The university's motto is driven to discover. Make yours learning for a lifetime. Become a nerd and make the future. Because nerds make the world we live in. Nerds write the novels, compose the music, create the films we enjoy. Only a nerd could make a feature-length film about Spider-Man or Watchmen. Nerds invented radio. Nerds invented television, computers, the internet. Without nerds, you'd find out the latest sports scores by word of mouth. Nerds run this planet. (laughs) And we're not going to take it any more from the man. So if you can become both a geek and a nerd, you will be set for life. Do you think it's just an accident they made money the same color as Brainiac? (laughs) If you can combine your passions with expertise and couple it with a continuing curiosity, you will become an educated person, which is why you went to college in the first place. You are here by your choice and your hard work at an institute of higher learning. Every day, develop your intelligence, for it is your only superpower. We are not as strong as the bear. We can't fly like the eagle. We're not as fast as the cheetah or indestructible like the cockroach. Our only talent, our only advantage is our intelligence. And we should use it every day, for the forces of evil are always waiting. Thank you very much, and welcome. Welcome to the University of Minnesota.